welcome to Totality Town. As we continue our countdown and looking forward towards Totality in 2024, we're going to do a quick review. One of the things I've learned as a teacher is that I should never assume people understand all of the vocabulary that's thrown around in astronomy. So this video is going to be a simple look at the different types of solar eclipses, and we're going to use the solar eclipse of April 20th, 2023 as our example. Here's a quick list of the four different types of solar eclipses. Solar eclipses are all about geometry. The moon casts a shadow in space when the sun, moon, and earth all line up, and that's when you get a solar eclipse. The exact type of eclipse depends on how perfect or how slightly imperfect that alignment is. Geometry is a three-dimensional game. The moon's orbit around the Earth is tilted five degrees compared to the Earth's orbit around the sun. And that means that the moon spends most of its time either above or below the plane of the Earth's orbit. Because the moon's orbit changes from month to month, sometimes the moon just isn't at the right level at the right time, and its shadow is going to be cast off to the side of the Earth. If the moon is slightly off in either the horizontal or the vertical directions, that's when our best case is to see a partial solar eclipse. The name tells you exactly what you'd expect. Only part of the sun is blocked by the moon. Now, there's a range of partial eclipses. Sometimes only the smallest bit of the sun gets blocked, and sometimes the moon blocks almost all of the sun's disk. Depends on where you are in the globe, as well as the specifics of that individual event. So that takes care of two dimensions, the vertical and the horizontal. But what about the third dimension? Well, that's distance. The moon's orbit is not perfectly circular. It's elliptical, and that means that there are times of the month when the moon is simply closer to the Earth and times when it's further away. The technical terms here are perigee, for when the moon and the Earth are closest together, and apogee, for when the Earth and moon are farthest apart in the moon's orbit. By the way, this is also what causes supermoons and mini-moons. When the full moon occurs close to the time that the moon reaches perigee, we call this a supermoon because it appears larger in the sky, because it's closer. When the full moon takes place at apogee, the moon's further away and looks smaller in the sky. I go into more depth on this in my video about supermoon lunar eclipses, and that video will be linked at the end of this video. If a solar eclipse happens when the moon is further away from us, we get some interesting stuff. The moon's shadow may not reach all the way down to the Earth's surface. The moon's going to be too small. It's not going to block all of the sun's disk. If you're in the center of the path for that eclipse, you'll see it as what's called an annular solar eclipse. The word annular comes from the word annulus, which means ring. And you'll often hear annular eclipses referred to as a ring of fire! That's actually a fairly accurate description because we see a ring of the sun around the moon. These eclipses are a lot of fun, but just know that, no, they aren't as spectacular as total solar eclipses because the sky doesn't get as dark around you. Remember, the moon's shadow is not making it all the way down to the surface. And we're not going to see the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona. But if you are in the central path, you'll get a good show. If you're outside of that central path, then you're going to see a partial eclipse, and the further away you are from this central region, the less of the sun is going to be eclipsed. Partial and annular eclipses cover all of the alignments that are near misses. But what happens when the alignment between the sun, the moon, and Earth is perfect? That's when we get excited, because that's when we get total solar eclipses. The moon will block all of the sun's disk. However, the moon's shadow has narrowed down to almost nothing by the time it reaches Earth. So the path of a total solar eclipse is always going to be pretty narrow. Lots of people will see the event as a partial solar eclipse, but only a small, small part of the globe sees it as a total solar eclipse. Now, some people seeing one thing while others see something else brings us to the final type of solar eclipses, a hybrid solar eclipse. And these are pretty rare. 
A hybrid solar eclipse happens when the moon is at a very specific distance from the Earth. This is easiest to explain by looking at a graphic. The Earth is curved, and so some parts of the globe are just a few thousand miles closer to the moon than others. Here, you see the moon's shadow being cast, but this surface of the globe is just a little bit too far away from the moon over here, and the shadow doesn't quite reach. These folks will witness an annular solar eclipse. However, as the moon's shadow continues to travel along the curved surface of the Earth, observers in this part of the globe are close enough, and the shadow of the moon does reach all the way to the ground, they get to see a total solar eclipse. As the moon continues to move, the event goes back to annular for this part of the globe over here, because once again, the moon's shadow can't quite reach. A fantastic example of this is the hybrid solar eclipse on April 20th, 2023. First of all, notice how the path of the eclipse is especially narrow. And again, that's because the moon's shadow is narrow, like we just talked about. The further away the moon is, the narrower the shadow will be. Look way out here where the eclipse begins. See how the eclipse path starts this wide, but then it narrows to this point before switching and starts getting wider again. If you're west of that inflection point, you're going to see this as an annular solar eclipse. East of that point becomes a total solar eclipse. This particular eclipse in April 2023 barely touches the land. Eclipse, this tiny little peninsula on the northwest corner of Australia, covers only a tiny portion of Timor and then passes over a really remote piece of West Papua before heading out to sea again. See how the path is getting narrower again. Somewhere between the Marshall Islands and the Gilbert Islands, out here in the Pacific, the moon's shadow can't quite reach the Earth's surface again, and this eclipse will end as it began. These observers out here will see this as an annular solar eclipse. Hybrid solar eclipses are fairly rare because the moon's distance from the Earth has to fall within a really narrow range for it to happen. There's going to be at least a partial solar eclipse every year, and there are rarely more than two years between total solar eclipses. Hybrids, however, only happen every eight to 10 years, so let's call it once a decade. That covers all the different types of solar eclipses and gives you a mini preview of the April 20th hybrid solar eclipse. 2023 features two different eclipses, the hybrid in April that we just talked about and an annular solar eclipse in October of 2023. Be sure to watch the previews for the annular solar eclipse as well as the 2024 total solar eclipse taking place here in the US. If you enjoyed these videos and find them helpful, please support the channel by subscribing. Thanks again for joining me here on Totality Town.